Hi again then guys, and welcome to episode 20 of Ultimate Exotics, the review series for the top-of-the-line supercars, both production and concept, that are featured on GT6. And in this episode we're featuring one of my personal favourite supercars in the game, also one of the best, if not the best, concept cars in the game. It's the 2002 Cadillac Cian concept. Now Cian is of course Spanish for 100 and that gives you a big clue as to why this car was produced as a concept. That is not a production car of course. This car was built essentially as a birthday present from Cadillac to Cadillac celebrating 100 years of Cadillac. And it's a real shame that this car wasn't produced as a production supercar. So many awesome concept supercars, not only from Cadillac but also from companies like Volkswagen or Peugeot, have been produced over the years, even including the GT by Citroen, which is probably one of the most famous ones, just don't end up getting produced. And that's such a shame, because these cars could have been incredible. The Cadillac Cian, the Volkswagen W12, the Peugeot 907, the Chrysler ME412. These vehicles could have been absolute monsters of the supercar world, but due to various reasons, they didn't end up being produced. And in the case of the Cian, this could have been the perfect rival for the Zonda, because in many ways it's actually a very similar car. And most people probably don't think of the Cadillac Cian as being a rival for the Zonda, but if you look at the spec, it's actually a surprisingly similar machine. They are both very similar in the way that they approach their visual design in a very sharp, aggressive, oddball, very unique way. They're both very chiseled looking cars, but also both very, very good looking cars. Now the Cadillac Cian is considered, I know, by some people to be an ugly car. Personally, I cannot understand that reasoning. How on earth can you say that this is an ugly car? It looks amazing. But beyond that, it also shares very similar specs to the Zonda. It has a 7.5 litre naturally aspirated V12, very similar to the Zonda with its 7.3 litre naturally aspirated V12. And this car in real life produces around 750 horsepower. Now we don't know as far as I'm aware how quick the real car is, but you can surmise with that kind of spec, it's going to be pretty rapid. Now on the game, you can supercharge this car up to 1,045 horsepower and 657 foot-pounds of torque. It only weighs in at under 1,200 kilos and produces 880 horsepower per tonne. Surprisingly though, the PP is not as high as you'd probably expect. It sits at 642, which although certainly is high, that's not quite as high as other supercars with a similar spec. Now although that may seem odd, it's actually a very good thing, because for its PP level there is almost nothing that can beat this car in a straight line. Check it out, look at other supercars and de-restrict them down to the same level as this one, and there are almost none that can take on this car for pure top speed. This car can do around 300 miles per hour under its own power, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on what you've tuned it for. And the acceleration is, as well, among the very quickest of the supercar class. However, this is not just a straight-line missile. This car actually backs up those crazy specs and its straight-line brute power with genuinely surprising circuit racing ability. This car is shockingly forgiving for such a powerful car. You'd expect it, especially being a concept, to be a very rough around the edges kind of supercar, a car which doesn't really have much thought to cornering, but is just about big eye-catching numbers that make it stand out at a car show. But it actually goes around the track amazingly well. I would say possibly even one of the best circuit racing supercars in the game. The handling is fantastic, but very measured and very controlled at the same time. 
there's no way near as much wheel spin or oversteer as you'd expect from such a powerful and lightweight supercar. And overall, this car is one of the relatively few supercars that can genuinely take on racing cars on tracks more than just straight lines. This can actually take on racing cars around corners as well. It's a truly brilliant supercar. Unfortunately, it's not a premium, which is a shame, and I really personally hope that they update that in the future, because this car has a pretty sweet interior. And the only real possible downside that you can have with this car, apart from the looks, which I mentioned earlier, some people are opposed to it, but the only real thing is the price. It's a reasonably expensive car, at just over 1.2 million credits, 1.25 to be exact, but whereas with the Audi Nuvolari that I reviewed a couple of days ago, that was a lot for that car, because at the end of the day it's a super sports car. This, however, is much, much more of a full-on hardcore vehicle than that Audi, so I would say this car is most certainly worth that price, and if you don't own the Cadillac Sien yet, I'd strongly suggest that you buy one, because it's one of the best supercars in the game. So, that's it for this episode, I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.